What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles, back at you with another video. Get your pen and paper ready because we're gonna be diving into Reptile Genetics 101. I want to emphasize that this is not going to be an in-depth reptile genetics video. This is something that I really want to bring some of the newer keepers up to speed on what some of these terms are. Dominant, incomplete, dominant, recessive, 66% het, 50% het, 100% het, what does it all mean? So I'm going to be showing off some examples and I'm hoping that this, if you guys watch it once or maybe twice, this is going to show you exactly what you need to know to just kind of get your foot in the door in reptile genetics. This channel is boa focused, so the morphs I'm going to be using are going to be boa constrictors. However, these will still apply, and these genetic terms will apply to any type of snake out there, whether it be a colubrid or a ball python or, or whatever, this same type of genetics are going to apply. Just the morphs themselves might change. So the first type of genetic we're going to start with is probably the easiest, and this is one of those where I want to start easy and work our way towards the more complicated to understand, but this is the dominant genetic. Dominant is basically what you see is what you get. Now this specific animal here that didn't bite me but wanted to, that this specific animal here is an IMG hypo. Now I don't have any straight IMGs, but the concept of a dominant is IMG is dominant. Arabesque, scoria, what you see is what you get. If I breed an IMG, an Arabesque, a scoria, or one of those other dominant genetics into a normal animal, half of the animals are gonna be just like that original parent, that IMG, Arabesque, scoria, and then the other half are gonna be complete normals. So again, what you see is what you get. If I take this animal, breed it into something normal, I'm gonna, in theory of genetics and Punnett squares, I'm gonna get half and half. Half are gonna be an identical copy to that dominant. Obviously their patterns might change a little bit, but the other half are gonna be completely normal, no hidden heads, nothing else you need to worry about. It either is or it isn't that animal that you were trying to produce. The next one that we're going to talk about is incomplete dominant. Now this is really important to pay attention to because it plays right into the recessive genetic component. Uh, with boas, this is like your fires, your hypos, your labyrinths, your key wests, your ladder tails. This is, you know, all in that same complex, your Mayan. Basically, a incomplete dominant is something that if you breed it with another animal that is also incomplete dominant, you get a totally different looking animal. So this specific girl here is a big fire. I may actually put her back because she's quite heavy and I want to make sure that I'm able to portray exactly what incomplete dominant is. But essentially, it's something where you get a animal that will pass its genetics down like a dominant trait. So if I breed this fire to a normal, we're going to get half fires, half normals. However, if I breed a fire to a fire, or a hypo to a hypo, or key west to a key west, ladder tail to ladder tail, whatever it might be in that incomplete dominant realm, you're going to be getting a different looking animal, totally different looking animal. So in this instance, fire to fire is going to be giving you a leucistic animal, very different looking animal. Let me put her back, because she's quite heavy. A few moments later. I put her back because she was too heavy and I thought I'd grab this smaller male. This is a hypo fire, so we have two incomplete dominant traits in one animal. And what I want to emphasize is talking about that fire complex, but at the same time it works the same with all incomplete dominant traits. So a fire to a normal is going to give you half fires that will look that fire appearance and it will give you half normals. If you do a fire to a fire, this is where it gets a little bit more like het genetic, so it's important to pay attention, like that recessive component to this, is if I did a fire to a fire, I'm gonna get, in theory, one quarter of the animals are gonna be an ivory or a leucistic, that super fire version. The other half of that animals are gonna be a fire, visual, just like this, and a quarter of those animals, 25%, are gonna be normals with no fire in them at all. So again, that is a quarter of them are gonna be super fires or leucistic animals, a completely pure white boa. Half of those are 50% are gonna be fire, visual fire, just fire, just like this, minus the hypo. And then the other 25% are gonna be complete normals. And that's important to understand because a fire itself or any of these incomplete dominant animals 
act almost like what I like to refer to as visual hets or heterozygous animals. And when we talk about recessive, that's something to keep in your mind if you're struggling with the component of what recessive genetics are. I'll continue to use fire as an example, but let's dive into the recessive component now. I changed up the animal and fast forwarded a little bit to the recessive genetics. This is a blood which is recessive, but before I close out incomplete dominant, I wanna to touch on what happens if you bred, let's say a fire to a leucistic. So you have that full dominant animal and you breed it to a fire. What you're gonna get is you're gonna get half of the babies are gonna be completely leucistic, really pretty looking pure white animals. The other half of the babies are gonna be fire. So all of that combined is half leucistic, half fire. That's if you breed a fire to a leucistic. Now, if you breed a leucistic to a leucistic, this works almost exactly like a recessive genetic trait, which means you're gonna get all leucistics. So visual super form leucistic to leucistic is gonna give you all leucistic babies. These are just like a visual recessive animal. So your recessive traits are things like your blood, all lines of albino, anatheristic, these are all recessive. Most corn snake morphs are recessive as well, which means you need two of them identical. Now, where this gets complicated is the 50, 66% hets and the 100% hets. And that's why it was important to cover that fire or that incomplete dominant. First is that if I breed, let's say this blood to a normal animal, I'm gonna be making all normals that are 100% het for this trait, for this blood trait. So these work almost like if I bred a leucistic to a normal, I'm gonna get all fires, except you can't see it. So every baby is gonna have that 100%, that half set of genetics to make a visual animal or in a incomplete dominant term, it would be like a fully super, for, super form of the animal. All of it is gonna be in that animal, but they're not gonna show visually in a recessive trait. And that's the differentiator between recessive and incomplete dominant. Now, if I take a het, 100% het to a visual animal, I'm gonna get half of the babies are gonna be visual and half of the babies are gonna be 100% het. Everybody gets confused here. If I take a het to a het, this is like taking a fire to a fire. Your odds are essentially exactly the same as if I bred a fire to a fire, where these are both 100% het to 100% het. If I take a 100% het, and breed it to 100% het, one quarter or 25% of those babies should be visual blood or visual albino or visual for whatever recessive trait you're gonna be trying to make. If I, the other 50% are going to be 100% het, then the remaining 25% are gonna be just complete normals. So if one in four of babies are gonna be that visual if you do a het to a het, what you're left with is three of the babies could be potentially 100% het. Because you don't know what it is, by odds, two of those three babies are going to be 100% het. They call it 66% het. There is a 66% chance that any one of those normal babies is 100% het. I hope that makes sense. Rewind it if it didn't and keep watching this until it does. It's important to understand if you're gonna to try to be a breeder or if you are potentially just purchasing an animal as a pet but may wanna breed in the future, it's very important to understand how these genetics work. Where does 50% het come in? 50% het is if I take a 100% het animal and I breed it to a normal or something that doesn't have that genetic in it. Now that works just like a fire to a normal, where if I took a fire to a normal, half of those babies are going to be visual fire. So a het works like a non-visual incomplete dominant animal, which means that if I take a 100% het, it 100% holds that trait and I breed it to a normal, in theory, half of those babies are going to be 100% het. But because we can't tell them apart, if we could, they would be incomplete dominant, but they're recessive, so you can't tell them apart. We call it a 50% het because there is a 50% chance that any random normal baby you pick out of that litter is 100% het for those genetics. Again, take a notepad, watch this video over if you've been struggling to keep up, but I hope this helps you. If you are looking to dive a little bit more into genetics, make sure you check out the Patreon. I can help you, whether it be one-on-one -on -one community chats or through random posts, patreon.com slash Jason's Exotic Reptiles. If you're looking for any animals, make sure you check out my website, jasonsexoticreptiles.com. Till next video, let's keep it moving.